Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode 47. We're going to talk about the solar eclipse today, so stay tuned. But first, my little commercials. This is going to be a great episode. We've got Lemoyne Johnson from Johnson Photo Imaging, who's actually going to travel to go photograph the solar eclipse. So if you would do us a great favor and share this. If you're watching this live, just click on share and share this so it'll be on your news feed as well. Really helps us a lot. Really, really appreciate it. If you're not watching us live, remember you can watch us also on YouTube after the show. Or if you like to listen to podcasts like I do, I love to listen to podcasts in the car. Uh, we're on iTunes as the Understand Photography Show. We've got a few workshops coming up. We've got our Ladies Only Weekend here in Naples, Florida, coming up September 15th through the 17th. That's limited to just three ladies. It's a weekend, and you are going to be so stretched. It's designed for beginner to intermediate photographers. Um, we're going to start with a shoot and manual class, and then you are going to you're going to do everything. You're going to do streaking lights, silky water. Uh, some street photography. We, we rent a boat with a captain. We go out and photograph this uh, this really cool structure that's floating away into the sea or sinking away into the sea. It's a fun, fun weekend. September 15th through 17th. Our Everglades workshop with Joe Fitzpatrick is January 25th through the 28th this year. And Joe's also leading a trip to the forgotten coast of Florida, which is in North Florida in the Panhandle. Our home base is going to be Apalachicola. I fell in love with that area when I saw it about a year and a half ago. So we went back up this April to plan the trip. So uh, we don't have the exact date yet, but it's going to be around April 15th, 2018. All that information is on the understandphotography.com website. So my guest today is photographer and president of Johnson's Photo Imaging, Lemoyne Johnson. Welcome, Lemoyne. Hi, Peggy. Thanks for having me. And thanks for handling our little stressful situation oh. with our technical issues. That always, <laughs> always seems to happen. Live shows yeah. are a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. I am learning about you. You said you were a doctor? Yeah, I used to do general surgery and pediatric surgery, and I just kind of got tired of the system and the bureaucracy. And mm -hmm. so my dad always said, when you get tired doing what you're doing and it's no longer fun, you might as well go do something different. So be getting ready for it. And that's how I ended up uh, converting into photography. And so you were a, like a hobbyist and you just thought, I'm yeah, going to start a camera store? My dad started me uh, taking photographs when I was 10 years old. Oh, wow. And uh, mostly because we did big family trips. And my mom would tell my dad in the front seat of the car to get out and take a picture. And he'd turn around to me and say, get out there and take that picture. <laughs> so, so that's kind of how it started. And uh, I just... Uh, Gradually got more and more involved in it and loved it and uh, kind of thought I would do uh, nature and wildlife photography when I retired from medicine. Uh, and I didn't want to make money at it as much as I just wanted to cover expenses of travel. But I like to go really exotic places, I think, and uh, at least in this hemisphere. And so uh, I said, hmm, too many people in that field, so what else can I do? And I and that's how I ended up getting into portrait photography and then uh, finally decided I'd had enough with the bureaucracy of medicine and just decided it was time to do something different and uh, so I said okay I'll start my portrait studio because I'd been doing professional photography at home since the early 80s okay and I um, so I got I got into it and uh, bought the land and we actually opened up on the uh in 99 and uh been at it ever since then and so uh, johnson photo imaging started off as a portrait studio because no started off as everything it was a all or none phenomenon okay so because I've, i think of yeah. you as a camera store yeah. with classes yeah. is what yeah. i think of johnson photo yeah. Imaging. i have a uh, uh bought the land now the land is right on a busy street too, it's right? It's on Highway 70, which is exit 213 and you're on I-75. And in Bradenton, Florida. In Bradenton, Florida, and we're a half mile west of the interstate. Yeah, I know, you got and, a great uh, location. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, uh, and then I designed the building myself. And, and the, but, the building's very retro, yeah. it's yeah, very, it's, very uh, cool. A uh, friend and I, we went to Miami Beach for three days 
walking around taking pictures of all of the Art Deco buildings there, and then we combined that to make the uh, make the building. And of course, the county said you've got to have it's a commercial building; you have to have an architect involved. So that took the architect two years to put my plans onto paper, and I don't know several thousand dollars before I. It was actually finally approved, and then we went ahead and built the building. And uh, so, and so when you started off, it was a portrait studio, camera and store, a camera store, photo lab. Oh, and a photo uh, lab and a classroom because I love to teach. Ah. I just don't have enough time anymore. So uh, yeah, because you're yeah, so busy yeah. traveling. Yeah, and we opened <laughs> up as a um, uh, totally digital store. Basically, we we uh, and we still are that way. We have. I don't think we even own a, a film camera anymore except for a historical one maybe, but uh, mm -hmm. we started off with that from the get-go. We had the very first Fuji Frontier in the United States uh, wow. back in 90, it was actually delivered in July of 99, and then we had our uh, grand opening, it was on Halloween, which kind of fits my weird personality, <laughs> some people would say. Uh, and uh, and it's been uh, great since then. Wow! And it's 18 years you're celebrating. 18 years this Halloween, which wow. is three months from now. That's so awesome. everybody's invited to come up. Uh, we always have carrot cake for sure, and then depends on what mood strikes me. We had some barbecue last year, and we really usually, yeah we usually have some uh, in-store specials. Uh, uh, then so too, if you're so. anywhere near Bradenton, Florida, yeah. Johnson yeah. Photo Imaging. Yeah. And, no. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, I was just going to say, and you know, we used to do uh, kids uh, costume, uh, you know, an event for that, and sometimes we do that, sometimes we don't. Just depends on what depends mood on your strikes mood, us. Huh? Yeah, it really does. <laughs> really does. And uh, we just have a lot of fun, and uh, I think that's kind of the whole thing, really. Well, all, you've done, all the employees love working there. And well, everything. you've done very well because most camera yeah. stores are shutting down their doors and there yeah. you are this is i mean w here we are two hours away and that's yeah. where we go yeah where we the go uh, bradenton closest store uh going south from from bradenton is pitman's in miami uh the closest store east is in downtown orlando and the closest store going north and west is on the outskirts of uh, pensacola so we kind of have the uh, west coast of florida yeah. with lots of millions of customers potentially there and uh, <laughs> and uh, it's worked out great and yeah well we, I, t I told you i took classes yeah, there long yeah. long time ago because yeah. i mean yeah. probably what happened to me is when i was learning i was trying to learn digital and mm -hmm. there was no there was no place to learn digital yeah. you couldn't just go on the internet back yeah. there then and so i found out about dimage that mm -hmm. camera club yep. up in sarasota and yeah. then i found out about you and that you yeah. had classes yeah. and uh it, that was probably 2001, maybe, yeah. 2002, maybe, I'm not yeah. sure. That was, it, that was it in the beginning phases and everything. It just has gotten more and more. We have uh, classes probably three or four nights a week now. We have wow. uh, classes and field trips and do things on the weekend. Uh, there's actually a movie set that a fellow built in Manatee County that is a, uh, it's called Dry Creek because there is actually a creek that runs through it that's dry about half the year. Okay. Right now it's about four foot deep <laughs> because of the rainy oh season. Oh boy, it's rained a lot. Yeah, but uh, they film a, uh, 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 a video that he writes the scripts and everything for and it's on uh, one of the upper channels in uh, there, except we can't get it in Manatee County because of some fight between the two cable companies uh, up there but, but uh, it's, a, it's a western yeah. tv show well it's actually it's frontier florida but if you look at it you'd think it was a western they have about uh, 50 actors in it and it's a uh, it's quite a show and we'll, so you do a model shoot because yeah, joe well, went to it one yeah, time yeah i uh, i met the guy uh, um, his name is les mcdowell and i met him maybe oh, 15 years ago i guess and uh, uh helped him you know get going uh, with contacts in Bradenton that he didn't know about and everything and uh, and so we get to go out there we have to pay to use it and we oh, use the actors of the uh, um, of the, the video the show uh, we we actually hire them to come out and be the models yeah. uh, a lot of the time and we do fun things we've staged a wedding out there oh, we've, wow. uh, you know we've, we've done all sorts of things uh, in the works or we're actually going to have a uh, 
Halloween thing out there, prob uh, probably uh, Sunday before Halloween, and it's it's uh, going to be a uh, the uh, Dry Creek Zombie Apocalypse. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and uh, so hey, we have a lot of fun out there, and uh, everybody enjoys going out there. So oh, I'm I'm yeah. very impressed with all yeah. your success. Yeah, absolutely. but we're going to get right to the solar sure. eclipse stuff because yeah. I know that's why everybody tuned in. They wanted I'm. Everybody was so excited when I told them that you were coming on and we were going to talk about the solar yeah. eclipse because I think photographers are fascinated. Why are we so fascinated? It's by something it? that doesn't happen very often. So, and, yeah. Uh, you know, personally, I have to confess, I have never photographed one. I saw a partial eclipse about 55 years ago, but this is it. The next good one in the United States is in 2099. Ooh. So, they don't happen very often. And you've got uh, a lot of preparation to be ready to do it first and above all, to do it safely so you don't damage your eyes. Uh, and second of all, you have to practice in advance because the solar eclipse lasts about two minutes and 30 seconds for totality. Okay. Uh, from start to end, it's about three hours. But the part you want is totality, and that's uh, unfortunately not going to be down here in Florida. But... Uh, Still a very good eclipse. They'll be in Naples. There'll be about an 80% eclipse. Okay. And, uh, so you get some really pretty neat pictures of that, too. Yeah, I think maybe it's the challenge because it's I something so. yeah. exciting that we don't yeah. usually get yeah. to do. And, and you only get one shot at it. Yeah. Unless, unless you travel. You know, there's eclipses that uh, the guys that are like the uh, explorers of light for Canon and the Nikon uh, uh, photographers. Yeah, and everything, yeah, they get paid, paid to go to Africa or South America or wherever in the world it is. Uh, but most of the, cliffs, uh, the eclipses statistically occur over the ocean. Uh, oh. I guess that's because the ocean's 60 some percent of the surface of the earth. So uh, oh. uh, they're, they're, they're a couple a year actually. You just have to be in the right place. And most of the time you can't get there. Wow. So. So now you, you heard about it. You said, that's something I want to do. So you're actually traveling. Yeah. Where are yeah, you going? I found out about it a couple of years ago uh -huh. uh, that it was coming and started prepping for that. Uh, one of the uh, uh, facilities in Manatee County is uh, South Florida Museum. And uh, we're involved with them uh, personally. And they, every year, take school teachers that are in the middle grades and they go and hunt fossils with them up in northwestern Nebraska. Uh, wow. And it turns out it's going to be about 30 miles from the uh, line of totality uh, that comes through western Nebraska. Uh, the thing that makes it so good is it's uh, a high desert plains, okay. uh, about 5,000 feet. Humidity will be about 10%. And out there, the eclipse, uh, the total eclipse is at about 1145 in the morning. Okay. So, yes, you're looking straight up, wow. which is hard on your neck. Oh, but yeah. uh, but uh, the likelihood of having clouds uh, and everything is about 13% that you won't be able to see it. That's not too uh, bad. It Those exits are good the United, Yeah, it exits the United States in uh, south of Charleston. And there you only have about a 15% chance you'll see the eclipse because there it's uh, about 2.45 in the afternoon and the humidity will be up around 90%. And oh, so you'll have clouds. So it's, uh, it's worth going someplace so anyway. And I'm from Nebraska, so. Oh, you are? Yeah. Ah. And there's, uh, there's a big Nebraska State Park there that is a, uh, an old uh, cavalry post. Uh, that has been turned into a state park, and you can you know, they have campgrounds, and and you can stay in the actually the old cavalry barracks and everything. So wow! We, uh, now you have a okay. you have an RV. Or yeah, we travel right? in an RV. We do. Nice. Uh, my wife and I do uh, about twenty five thousand miles a year, and have been doing it since oh my god seventy three. So uh, since nineteen seventy three, you've been doing yeah. that. Oh. Yeah, in my figuring and checking things and based on when we sell them and the mileage on them, I've probably driven over three quarters of a million miles in the oh motorhome. Oh my gosh. All in uh, North America and Canada. Wow. So it's, uh, it's fun and, uh, and we travel uh, every year. In fact, when we go to Nebraska to photograph the eclipse, after that's done, we're heading north into Canada 
and then heading east as far as we can drive, which is uh, uh, into Nova Scotia and Prince oh. Edward Island and, oh, and that sort of thing. That and then uh, we'll be home uh, about uh, a day or two before Halloween, which is our 18th birthday. So I've got to be back for that, ah. you know. Uh, oh, and so. speaking of birthdays, happy birthday. Thank you. I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's his birthday today. Yeah, I'm 72 years old today. So, Happy uh, birthday. I feel like I'm about 60 or 55 most days. Oh. There's an occasional <laughs> day or two that are bad. So, uh, Hey, every yeah, birthday we have yeah. to count our blessings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's nice to get, It's. I mean, it's not fun getting older, but it beats the alternative, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, that's why I look at it. And, you know, and now I'm officially a ward of the state because I get... Uh, Medicare and I get Social Security, so you know, appreciate all you youngsters out there working and kicking <laughs> into those funds. My mother was so funny. She got her first check from I don't know yeah. what it was from. Yeah. She was waving it around. I'm on I the know. dole. I'm that's on right. the dole. Yep, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. Oh, so that's so cool. So now, do you know where are the best places to view the, to, to the well, total the, eclipse, um, or do you know? The, the fourth one is the uh, up in the panhandle of Nebraska. Uh, then Nebraska there, has a panhandle like we do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's sort of the same, yeah. Uh, and uh, that's we're going to be in uh, north of a little town called Crawford is where we're going to be staying, and we'll be about uh, on a ranch out there where they, they hunt the fossils. But the center line, which is where you want to be at, because the closer you are to the center line, the longer time you have of totality okay. uh, is uh, about 30 miles south. So that's where we're actually going to be. Okay. Uh, the, um, at, in Crawford, the town that's right where uh, Fort Robinson is, the state park, um, they're going to have about 10 seconds of totality. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's, it's worth driving that 30 miles. Um, and it's, uh, but it's uh, going to be jammed, probably, even though we're way out in the boonies. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, there's a little town called uh, Albion that has about 8,000 people that live in it. And they are expecting over 100,000 people to come to that town because it's right on the dead center line. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. And, Where else uh, in the United States? Well, the top. you said the, Charleston, but yeah. it's going to be cloudy. Yeah, the probably. top, well, probably. You the, don't know. The top. Uh, Three places are actually private. They're tops of mountains that universities have have observation places. And yeah, so yes, they're the best, but you can't get to them. So that's the problem. Uh, there is a book, and and I know for the people that are on the podcast, you can't see it, but I'll try to describe it. Uh, uh, it's the Road Atlas uh, of the Total Solar Eclipse, and it covers and crosses the entire country. Uh, and, uh, and shows the path, which again we're showing it, but the thing, uh, the eclipse comes in and the first major city is over here in uh, at Bend, Oregon. Uh, then it leaves the country again south of Charleston mm -hmm. and it, it travels All across the, the entire time. It, uh, in Bend, Oregon it's about uh, 1045 where it comes into the country and it's almost 3 o'clock when it leaves the country. So it's moving fast, and yeah. you've got, at any location, you've got about two minutes and 30 seconds to get your picture. Um, and I, you know, I keep this book at the store till I leave for Nebraska in two weeks, but if anybody's wondering where they're going to be and where the eclipse is, you're welcome to call me or come up, and we'll find out where you're going and see if there's a good spot. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, photographers that are in this area that are talking about going up into Kentucky okay? Uh, because you want a place that is uh, doesn't have a lot of extraneous light around and you don't want a lot of obstructions although really that's not going to be a problem because the whole place you're going to be within about 10 or 15 degrees of straight up. You're going to be, yeah, yeah. you're going to be shooting and, up. <laughs> and that's part of the the problem and some of the equipment that I brought along that we can talk about later that uh, allows you to do that and to get a pretty good uh, location of it. Okay. We will put the, that book in, the name of that book in the show notes on understandphotography.com, by the way. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and will that tell us also, like here in Naples, we're not in the path, yeah. but it will say, hey, you know, you're not going to get a total eclipse in Naples, but... 
Yeah, I again I brought some some paperwork that I'll I'll show one so you can see it if you're watching on the video. Uh, but I'll describe it too. This is a picture of what they anticipate the eclipse will look like in Naples. Okay. And in Naples, you're going to have about an 80% eclipse of the sun, which is pretty significant. Yeah. And uh, some of the simulations I've seen is kind of cool. If you're shooting the time lapse, the sun actually runs around the shadow of the moon because of the way it goes across it and everything, which which is kind of neat. And let me... Let me put my glasses on here and give you the exact time that it's supposed to be, which uh, varies uh, some depending on whether you're reading what the newspapers say or the radio says or the TV say. But in general, it's going to be about uh, when you are at the midpoint of that, uh, you're going to be at about 245 to 250, somewhere in that time range. Um, my feeling is you got to be ready probably two hours in advance, particularly if you want to take some serial pictures going across the, uh, you know, as, as the sun is coming and the moon is coming across the sun okay. uh, to do that. And then down here, it's going to be about, uh, about 4.20 uh, and it'll be finished. Uh, and that's Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, so, so that's kind of... Yeah, it might be cloudy. Yeah, that's you may our get lucky and have a August, nice right? day like we kind of had this weekend. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's August 21st, which is uh, about five, four weeks from now, somewhere like that. So, Actually, three and a half weeks from now. So we can be prepared, but yeah. there's no guarantee that we'll see yeah. anything. Yeah. So. And and uh, but even if you are shooting it here. Uh, you may get something if it's thin light clouds, obviously. Yeah. If you can see a shadow on the ground, there's enough sunlight coming through and the sun is so bright that you will get something. Uh, but uh, And you're not going for totality down here. We know that. Yeah. So because you're not going for totality, you will uh, be able to uh, get something. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about, because you said it's a good idea to practice right. a lot. Yeah. Because there are different things you can do. Like you said, you could do time lapse yeah. or whatever. So let's right. just start from the beginning. Okay. Uh, what, what's all this well, stuff you brought here? Some of the equipment that I brought that I'll try to describe again for everybody. Uh, again, you, the, the most important thing is you need to, the first thing you all have to do is try to get a solar filter. Okay. Uh, and it has to say solar filter. Unfortunately, in the last week, I've seen reports there are some counterfeit solar filters oh, out there. People and, are so yeah, mean. Yeah. I don't get that. So and this, this, uh, the filter goes yeah. over the front of your lens. Right. It, it screws right in just like any other just filter. Like a CPL or uh, something. And mine I bought has a uh, filter. It was about $100. Uh, we, unfortunately, at JPI are out of them as most of the uh, photography supply people in the country are out of. It's, yeah. uh, uh, it's like the world discovered in the last three weeks, there's going to be a solar <laughs> eclipse, and every photographer, whether they're going or not, uh, does it. Now, there are still some, um, some of these uh, things. This is the, if you can re remember what uh, old, old, old uh, 3D uh, pictures like movies and pictures were like and you had these cardboard this is a set of cardboard glasses that fit right over your eyes and the film in it is is solar approved and it says solar eclipse approved on it okay. uh, and a lot of places you can get these for a buck or less okay and a lot of people are giving them away but make sure it says you know approved for solar viewing and you can do that now uh, this would protect your eyes and you have to have eye protection for everything uh, except when it's actually total at 2 minutes and but 20 we're to never 30 gonna have it total. You're not going to have that here so you got to do everything. States, we're not yeah. going to have it total. The other thing which I'm I'm now holding up is a pair of sunglasses that looks like sunglasses but they're also that way if you want to look at one of the lights and see there's no light that really comes through that. It's got to be extremely oh extremely bright. Uh, and this those have the side protections on, which is nice. So if, if you're working on your camera and happen to glance up, it takes uh, five seconds to start damaging your retina in your eye, and you don't want to take a chance. 
And but everybody's going to say, wait a minute, if I look at sunsets for more than five seconds, well, that's different because you're looking through, the reason the sun looks so orange is it's being filtered through the atmosphere tremendously. You're going to be looking straight up at the, at the sun, and so you, you just have to be careful because I don't want anybody to say I uh, did this and I, you know, and you said I could do this and that, and they come back and they've lost part of the sight of their eye. So, but now you can't see out of those at all. You can see the sun. So that's where the problem comes when oh. you're looking to do this. You've got to figure out how to get your camera set up showing the sun, which takes a while. And that's because of the different lenses you may use. You can use anything from a wide angle to probably you don't want more than about five or 600 millimeters of magnification in your lens. And that's, you know, again, if you're in totality, because if it's totality, what you really want to see is the uh, or, uh, aurora around the sun. And maybe we'll be lucky and there'll be a, a sun flare or something like that. Oh, yeah. and, and those can extend out about eight times the width of the sun. Okay. And so uh, what you, you really want to have the maybe center 20% at most of your viewfinder filled with the sun and the rest will look just black to you but you don't know till you get the images back okay, what so you're you going to do. Okay, so you don't want to fill the frame. Right, you don't want to fill the frame. But you don't want a little dot either. If no, it, right well, angle. it depends. If you're, you know, uh, point and shoot cameras are good for taking pictures of the solar eclipse because those you can take a whole bunch of images and then since we're all experts at Photoshop now, <laughs> you're going to composite those into one image and you'll see the sun moving and the moon gradually taking a bigger bite out of it. Oh. And that's for down here, is, it would be neat because you'll see this sun start maybe over here and then it'll gradually come around the moon like this. So you'll see the sun go whoop around it uh, in that time oh, period. So that you can, would be a yeah. cool shot. So you can do that. You so gotta that have a little bit of Photoshop lens. skill, but not a lot to do that. And, and you could just do that with a point and shoot? Mm -hmm. But point you need shoot. a filter, right? But you need a filter, that's the whole key. And there you can also, and I don't know if these, if it's still available or not, but you can buy just the film. Uh, and I got mine from a uh, astronomy source out of Astronomy Magazine, okay. uh, and it's a place called Thousand Oaks is the name of the company. And they're out of California, and that's their thing is related, really. They work with uh, astronomers and people who want to do the photo photos through and the you telescope. Think that they sell the film. Well, they did to Maybe. me, but I don't know if they still have any or not. That you could just put over your yeah, lens. Yeah, but, but they don't at least have to make the uh, thing. It comes in a, in a piece about um, probably three inches or four inches square, enough that it'll cover a 95 millimeter uh, filter size on a lens. Or you can and on what a point would you do? and shoot. Is it soft? Can you just put a rubber band around it? Or? Well, you can, but uh, I, what I would plan for my wife's point and shoot, we're just going to take a little piece of uh, double stick tape okay. and put that on the lens. Don't let the camera turn off and suck that tape into your lens, or you get a repair job. But uh, and you just stick oh, it you're to the you outside. Have a lens that's, that, yeah, it's a, oh, okay. a lot of the point and shoots have retractable <laughs> yeah. lenses, so just make sure that it it doesn't. Um, get sucked into there. Uh, and then the cameras have something that's really, really neat, is most of them now, including point shoots, have live view. Right. Which is great, and if you look at live view, you're not looking at the sun, you're looking at the image of the sun. So you don't have to have protection if you look at live view. You just don't dare look through the viewfinder if your camera or point and shoot has it. But your live view, your lens has to have that filter. Right, the lens because has to have it. if the lens doesn't right. have the filter, looking at live right. view can still hurt your eyes, right? Nope, not at live view it doesn't because it's you're seeing an image from what the sensor inside is that's, okay, that's creating so, the live view. So, so could you take the picture without the filter no. then? No, Why not? because the light is so powerful it will actually burn your sensor and knock out the little pixels in your sensor. So... I don't know. You're you're too young. You probably didn't. You probably didn't do this when you were a kid. But every guy, when he was about seven or ten years old, 
got mom or dad's magnifying glass and went out and fried ants on the sidewalk oh, and everything. It's That's like true. Animal cruelty. I know it is, <laughs> but everybody did that. And down here, it'd be cool because you could kill a bunch of fire ants, and all of us oh, want to yeah. poison You're those. Right. I but, wouldn't have a problem yeah. with that. <laughs> uh, but it, it is not only, and you can burn your skin if you focus that right. that uh, magnifying glass right so on your skin. So that's what it's going to do to your skin. Yeah, and it'll it'll actually it'll damage and destroy the pixels and everything. And I've heard of people saying that they they had their camera focused on the sun, mm -hmm. uh, but the shutter was down. Oh, well, my shutter's going to protect it. Nope. The shutter, it can burn a hole right in the shutter, too. So really? Because you're focusing uh, that in there. So you just you just have to be careful of your camera and your so eyes. So you have to have yeah. this. Somehow yeah. you have to find a filter or the film. Well, there's one alternative okay. uh, to the filter. Uh, Everybody's oh I'll get well I'll get a set of welders uh, you know a helmet or something oh, like that well yeah. you can do that except the people that are in the nose say you have to use a piece of welder's glass that is rated at 17 that's a one seven okay most welders goggles or stuff that you wear is only a five or six so oh. that will not work it'll just Maybe take you ten seconds till you ruin your eyes. <laughs> so, but you might be able to go to a welder's supply place and buy a piece of welder's glass, at which seventeen at rated yeah. seventeen. Yeah, yeah. All right. Remember, we're going to put this stuff in the show notes. Yeah. Now, there's one other thing that's very helpful, and even for young people, it's kind of hard to bend your neck all the way back and look straight above your head. Good point. So uh, they make uh, camera manufacturers, both Nikon and Canon, make these right angle viewers. What happens is, and, and it's just for those of you who are just listening, it's literally a 90 degree angle. It's got a focusable lens on one part for your eyesight. And on the other side is a clip that goes into the, uh, the back of your camera where you have that little soft shield so you don't hurt your eye on the back of your the uh, on, on yeah. your viewfinder. Mine's and, missing anyway. Yeah, <laughs> and most of the people it you know gets it for whatever disappears for some somewhere, <laughs> and you just slide this down over it. They come with uh, uh, like Canon has two different sizes of viewfinders, and it comes for two different uh, for the two different uh, camera sizes and everything, and they run uh, a couple of hundred dollars. But uh, that's what I'm that's planning so cool. on using, so you can look. Uh, you know, like you're almost, well, for me, I'm going to be looking, again, those who can see, but I'm, I would be looking straight forward. And in fact, here you can look at it and get a real nice view of the ceiling up there, which you got a little dust in your vents hey, you hey, need hey. to get. <laughs> but uh, uh, so you're looking comfortably out this way, but the lens is looking straight up. And then the other thing you do to find the sun is you, we use that zoom lens, the 100 to 400 zoom, let's say. A lot of people have that, or 100, 200 zoom. Uh, so you go to the 100 wider angle thing, there you can find the sun fairly easy, and then you zoom Amazing. out uh, oh, to get it and okay. everything. Um, the, no, uh, um, but this is an option. I mean, is you don't it have live, to use that. Live view is a better option. Because live view is a better option Although if you, you have still it. have to put your head back. Yeah, you got to put your head back Unless because you have a flip if screen. you have the yeah, if you have the tilting live view, uh, the uh, that's fine. Like I I know because it's I've got it. The, the Canon uh, D80 uh, has a rotating live yeah 80 the D80 80 uh, has a rotating live view. And so you can do the same thing from that standpoint. Uh, and a lot of the point and shoots have a rotating live view, so you can you can do that with it. But you're uh, right. If it's if you've got how how long do you have? T you have ten minutes up in two Nebraska? minutes and oh, thirty two seconds. Minutes. Two minutes still, and thirty your, seconds. Your so, neck could hurt. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. That's um, the other thing is. Um, most people don't realize that infinity, you know, well, if you're focusing and everything, if, if, if you don't use autofocus, you crank it over to the end till it hits the stop. Nope, that's infinity. So that means it's in focus if okay. it's out there. I'm going to start to slow you down. When you're saying it, you're talking about the lens. The lens, yeah. The, I'm most sorry. lenses, yeah. you can, there's a little infinity sign. It's yeah. that little... Um, it's an eight, a figure well, eight that's yeah, laying on its eight. side. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah. you put your lens on infinity, and supposedly it's focusing yeah. on everything. Go yeah. ahead. But it's not, and it's close. But 
you know, we're, I, f I forget how many millions of miles away the, the uh, sun is from it, but it's a good piece out there. So what the experts at Canon recommended, as sell several other places, is to, uh, again, put my cheaters on here. Um, a lot of you I know have this because we sell an awful lot of them, but the, uh, this is made by a company called Hoodman, and they're called a Hoodman Loop. And it's, uh, it's got a, uh, this is a little sort of a black tent-like thing that's about an uh, inch and a half by two inches in size. You put it right onto your live view, view screen. There, the top of it has a focusing for your eyesight onto that screen. And so you put that on there and then you, you turn off autofocus, you manually focus it, you know, best just go to the, you know, the infinity symbol and then you start backing it off. And it may just be, you know, thickness of a hair or two, but that makes a difference in your focus. Okay. And then you should take your camera off autofocus before you do this. And then, they, again, the Canon people recommend that you um, tape your uh, focus down so it, you don't accidentally bump the focusing ring. Uh -huh. And knock it off of where you thought you foc or where you know you focused it. So put a little yeah. piece of gaffer's yeah. tape. Yeah, on and get your gaffer's lens. tape or painter's tape is fine. They don't leave uh, gummy residue right. on there, and you don't have to stick it tight. It's it's just you know you're not going so to deliberately try it. to move it, but but you don't want to accidentally move it. That's and, good uh, advice. Yeah, and do that. Uh, you uh, the other things you want to uh, you know. Pretty much, you don't want to have mirror lock up on on your camera, okay. uh, and you want to turn off most of the other stuff. Of which, uh, not so much for this, but if you're doing like Milky Way, a lot of people will turn on their noise reduction right. in their thing. That slows things down. Right. I don't want anything that slows the camera down when I got two minutes and thirty seconds to get Good a bunch. Point. Good point. Yeah, and I'm taking three cameras. One's going to be. Um, wide angle, uh, uh, like a 24 millimeter or something like okay. that. And that's the one I'm going to have on a tripod and set with an intervalometer. And this is uh, one that's, that's built right into it. Again, showing people it plugs, uh, the description is it plugs into your camera. On Canon's it's on the left hand, mm -hmm. your left hand side, plugs into the camera and then it's got a big remote trigger. You can have smaller remote triggers but it's got a big remote trigger that up here you can set the time of what you, how often you want it to trigger the camera to take a picture. And I figure about, uh, if I'm gonna try to do this whole thing going across the horizon, I'm gonna try to um, probably take one picture every 10 minutes for about uh, six hours. Wow, Three hours so before, cool. three hours after. And then put them all together. And, and this and, just programs. And that'll program. So you set that camera up, get it focused right, and then start out with figure out, okay, the sun's going to go this way in my viewfinder, either left or right. And, uh, and then you set it uh, that way. Again, tape everything down so it doesn't move. Start it and then forget it. So you don't have to worry about that third camera for the rest of your shoot. Okay. Uh, so that's, then, that's one yeah. camera. Then the second, second and it, camera. And you got a wide lens on yeah, that, 24 the second millimeter. Second camera on a full frame. Uh, nope, I shoot the I shoot ADD. the uh, well the ADD. That's going to be um, the second camera. I shoot the first one's actually an old the older 7D, not the newer 7D okay. Mark II. Okay. Uh, the so the uh, 60D, I'm going to have a 100 to 200 millimeter zoom, probably with a 1.4 tele extender to get it out to. Let's for easy. It's 300 millimeters. Let's say, okay. Okay. That's the one that I'm going to shoot before totality and after totality, okay. and that one will have the filter on it. Okay. The third camera is the 7D Mark II, and that's going to have my 100 to 400 zoom on it, uh, no filter on it, because that one is going to be sitting on a table beside me. And uh, another hint, why I think of it. Bring out a long chair because you're going to be sitting a while, oh, yeah. and it's easier to kind of slouch back to be able to look straight up to do this. All so right. uh, versus standing, because if you're like me, my balance is not as good as it was 20 years ago, 
and I don't want to do a header over backwards. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but get a nice uh, beach chair. Yeah, or... yeah. Just do that, so you can you can easily do it. So I have a little table beside you, just enough to hold your other camera without the filter. I thought you were going to say yeah. hold your beer. Well, <laughs> that's after after you celebrate and see that you actually got something on your camera. <laughs> Uh, and then you uh, uh, go ahead and, and as soon as the, you know, I'll get into something when you do it, but as soon as you're under totality, okay. then you pick up the camera without the filter on, and which has to be a whole new set of settings, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, and, and what that does uh, is uh, you shoot that two minutes and 30 seconds, and you take all your pictures with that, and then you go ahead and as soon as you see a thing that's called uh, the uh, diamond ring, uh, then you, uh, at that point, grab the other camera that's got the filter on, go back to it and shoot the rest of the way okay. with the filter. So if you can see the sun, uh, that's fine. Now, um, about this eclipse that is so neat and why everybody is pointing to this being so spectacular is that the, um, the sun and the earth, the, the earth orbits around the sun. Okay. The moon orbits around the earth. Uh -huh. The moon does not have a perfectly circular orbit. Okay. It's also tipped about five degrees off of being a perfect orbit. So, um, how can I describe this? You, if you have the orbit of the Earth around the moon being perfectly level, level like the top of a table. Okay. The moon starts maybe two inches above the table, its orbit, and would, and then on the other side of your table, it's two inches below okay, the tabletop. So, all right. And so these things are changing all the time uh, in relative relationship to each other. The other thing that's a difference is uh, you have to figure in is how far what's the what's the distance between the earth and the and the moon and what's the difference the uh, distance but of the moon to the sun okay and this this eclipse is the perfect eclipse uh they think they expect it to be where the uh let's say how can i describe this again if you think if you have a 50 cent piece if anybody remembers what they look like but if you have a 50% of if you have a 50 cent piece uh -huh. and that's the sun and you hold it out at arm's length uh -huh. and then you have a quarter uh -huh. in your other hand and you move the quarter in and out from your eye and you'll find a spot where the quarter completely covers oh, the sun depending on how close it is right, to you right depending on how these orbits are oh, and and that ratio now the the um uh, the neat thing is this is perfect. The, uh, there are eclipses, and a lot of them are this way, where the uh, moon is too close to the sun, so you have what's called an annular eclipse. The center part of the sun is totally blocked out, but yet you have a narrow rim okay. of the sun showing, right, which means you still have to use your filter if you don't want to blind yourself. This is perfect where the sun is and the moon are aligned, so it will be totally covered. Oh, Again, I this see. is only at totality, and the advantages of that are you still see um, uh, all of the uh, corona of the sun uh, with all of the rays and stuff going out. You don't see that a lot of that with your na with your natural eye, but you will when you play with it in Photoshop. Okay. Uh, the other thing is. It's so perfect this time, they're predicting that you will actually see what are called Bailey's beads. Okay. Bailey like a, a name, Bailey's beads. Like Bailey's Irish cream. Exactly like that. <laughs> and if you drink enough Irish cream, you'll probably see them whether the sun is showing or not. Uh, but what it is, is they're so closely perfect in size, you're seeing the very extreme edge of sun rays coming between the mountains and between the craters on the moon. So you actually oh have little, little, and they typically are red, but again, your eye may not see that till you process it in Photoshop, okay. but you'll see little, little spots or specks around the 
perimeter of the sun, and that's that's called Bailey's beads. That's cool. Yeah. Now, as the sun, as the moon is coming into the sun to cover it, if you can again imagine that quarter and the fifty cent piece as uh -huh, it comes uh -huh. to almost completely cover the sun, and the last little bit of sun that is showing through leaves you you have a a sun almost like a sun flare right at the edge so it looks like a diamond ring you've got that that little really spark thing and in fact again I'll show to the to the um, uh, maybe I won't show that yes no uh, it's in one of the books that again yeah here we go here's the for those of you who can see this this is the diamond ring and it's this spot and this spot here and those of you who are just listening you'll just have to envision that it is um, uh, you know that way the corona is the whitish stuff that you're able to see and the last thing you see that you have to still have your filter on is that diamond ring that'll last three to five seconds then as soon as that's gone then you can get rid of your filter take the pictures and as soon as you see it coming on the other side you have to pop that back on and that'll uh, you know do that so uh, but but you should be able to get that if you're where there's a total eclipse now again down here in Naples you're going to get some spectacular shots but it'll be of just of the sun Partial. and the various positions yeah. of the moon but still be some great shots and everything so now, now you said to practice how do you yeah. practice well, you can't practice totality. Obviously. But what you do is you get your is you with what equipment you have, and you, well, you have to be on a tripod for you know, basically pretty much every camera uh, because of the settings. And oh, yeah. I've got to go fast to get to the settings. But the uh, um, you you set everything up. You get the camera with the filter on, with a right angle viewfinder, and everything if you're there. Uh, and then you practice finding the sun, which right. that's not as easy as it sounds. And, and then what you do is you practice, uh, you set yourself a, a stopwatch up uh -huh. and practice doing what you can do in two minutes and 30 seconds of totality. And the first time you do it, you'll get maybe three or four shots done is all in that time frame. If you practice it, and I've set it up about four times, to do it and just do it at and I do it at the time that the eclipse is going to be where you're shooting it we're going to be out where it's about uh, 10 minutes to 11 in the okay. morning uh -huh. so you set it at 10 minutes to the so 11 you're just here taking pictures of the sun just to the sun which will just Without be a yellow disc okay yeah it'll be a yellowish orange disc depending on your uh, exposure because again you're shooting through your filter right and then if you're if you're going to shoot that same camera without the filter you got to take pictures with it on then unscrew it and then take pictures with it off and then screw it back on and take okay, pictures I'm with it on. I'm a little confused then. Why are you taking it off? Because uh, if, if you're in totality. Okay. If you're down here, no, but if you're going somewhere to somewhere in South Carolina oh, or Kentucky or whatever. Picture. Yeah, well you'll have your, again you're just doing the, uh, yeah it'll be a black picture with a yellow spot in it and the yellow spots the sun. Uh, but you still, even if you're down here, I would practice it, at least getting your equipment yeah. ready so you've uh, got, you know, you'll have a longer time to watch it go through its circuit, you know, with the sun moving across it. But, but you still need to uh, to do that, and it's just it's just worth doing it because it's surprisingly when you put the glasses on, and you can't see. Uh -huh. Unless you're looking right at the sun, all of a sudden, I mean, we're all fumble fingers trying to do it. So you really, it's worth taking the time to practice yeah. well, it. Well, I'll tell you, when I, yeah. my first night photography, yeah. it was so hard yeah. to see. I, I was yeah. like, how do I, uh... Yep. So, um, anyway, before we run out of time here, let me I uh, give you some possible um, exposures that will give you a starting point. I think all of us yeah. would like to have a starting point and everything. Again, point and shoot cameras. Uh, you want to set it just on auto white balance and probably aperture priority mode okay. and then go from there and just let the camera do it they, they will adjust ISO they'll adjust 
Um, you What's know, your aperture be? Uh, doesn't make small. any difference. Shouldn't it be small? Well, like it depends. Yeah, or? it'll be small down here, but uh, and then it obviously changes when you go to totality because now it's dark outside. The birds quit singing. The ah. shadows become really sharp prior to totality because your light source, instead of being big, becomes really, really, really tiny at that last minute. Uh, strange things happen. A lot of times I've heard dogs howl and everything because they don't like it. And of course the Indians, that was uh, uh, something that was pretty, pretty good for them. So uh, they like that. Uh, now the, uh, we talked about uh, getting the focus set and all that sort of stuff. Uh, other things just in general, since it's going so fast, Format your cards, oh, oh. charge your batteries. Oh, yeah, especially you if know, you're doing a yeah. time lapse. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you know, you just get prepared because uh, try doing stuff, and that's what the practice helps you do is, is decide that's how, how long it is and everything. Now, the, if you are doing it uh, with an SLR camera, mm -hmm. uh, the, most of the people for, like, the, the diamond ring and the, uh, is going to be, one two thousandth of a second at f8 and ISO 100. Okay. Okay. So it's real fast. You can handhold that if you want, but as soon as that diamond ring is gone, you're in totality if you're going that direction. Yeah. Then to get the corona, which again is the flare around the sun, you drop down to one one hundredth of a second, f5 six to eight and ISO 100. Wow. Now. The other key is your bracket, like crazy. Uh, Canon, and I think Nikon does too, but I'm a Canon shooter, so I don't really know about Nikons. Uh, but you can set up, uh, they have uh, uh, C1, 2, and 3, which are custom set settings that it remembers on mm -hmm. your camera. Mm -hmm. You can set this up ahead of time. Uh, again, they recommend that you uh, bracket um, three stops, or three settings, then uh, underneath, then your, your uh, neutral setting, and then three different settings above in overexposure. And they recommend, this is coming from Canon again, that you do them two f-stops apart. So you're going from uh, about a quarter of a second up to uh, about a thousandth of a second. And if you bracket that in, the camera will take the pictures just you know, faster than right. you can talk. So you can, you can do that quite a bit, uh, which is an, another reason why you need high speed that record, because your problem is going to be recording it to your memory card. So right. get so memory you, cards that whatever you're using, SD cards uh, uh, that get the fastest you can afford and as big as you can afford them. I, I think you'd need at least a 32 gig, if not a 64 gig okay. card. If your camera will take cards that that uh, high yeah, capacity, shoots probably won't yeah, do that. The, um, but but you need that in order to uh, you know give yourself the best chance of not being a problem. And then the first thing you do when you're done, copy them to your laptop, so you got a duplicate. So if something happens, you're not a problem, uh, uh, not having a problem. Uh, and um, it's that's you know gives you ballpark ideas of where to start. Uh, but the main thing is if you can set it up and do all this bracketing, if you don't have that capability of your camera, uh, you can either change, you know, pick something, whichever one you're most familiar with, which you're going to find out when you test, uh, what's easiest for you to do. You can do ISO bracketing, you can do, uh, you know, either aperture, aperture or f-stop. Uh, you or do so. not want to do the, uh, again, the, like if your camera's maximum is a... Uh, 6400 ISO. Uh -huh. You don't shoot a 6400 because there's going to be so much noise in the picture and you want to have your noise reduction turned off otherwise you're going to go click. Mm -hmm. Yeah because that actually takes click. a second picture. Yeah yeah, yeah. and then it and then it does its thing to get rid of them it, yeah. and so the computer and the camera is going to be thinking and you will get probably one-tenth of the number of pictures that you would otherwise. But didn't I hear you say to mostly leave your ISO at a hundred? Uh, it, well, it depends on what's most comfortable for you. If you're bracketing, yes, okay, okay. Uh, that uh, for starting. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to be changing the ISO. That's why I'm setting these three uh, uh, custom, custom things functions. up so that you can set these things and Fast. do what's best. And otherwise, you're at the limit of, it, of what your lens will do 
and you know how good your tripod is. Uh, you want to be on a cable release so that again you don't have uh, problems with camera shake but, if you get to you the long one. This is this, this goes into the same thing as the cable release. Right? Yeah, well this is this, this is, is for the release. this is for the my 7D that's got the wide angle lens cuz that's got the And the you still time. need a filter on that too. Yep. You, so you yeah. got to get a filter. I'm, We've got to somehow got a couple find of the these filters. That's yeah, the big Yeah, that's the real key and it just uh, somebody's got them somewhere, but I would make sure you buy through a reputable place because you don't want to uh, have a, you know, think you've got coverage and you don't. Yeah, that's scary. That's scary. And, yeah. and I just, yeah. I don't understand people. Well, How, I don't why either, you got to be so yeah. mean? Just be honest in the yeah. world. It makes yeah. your life easier. I know. You're right. Jeez. Yeah. So, holy cow, I'm so excited. Yeah. Now you got me all excited. I want to do it too. Now, we are going to put a lot of this stuff in the show notes because we did talk a, about a lot of things. What, what's next for you? So, when do you, so when do you leave for your trip? Uh, today's Friday, right? Yeah. We'll be on the road in two weeks from today. Woohoo! Uh, leaving in, the, I've got a noon meeting, no, a 10, a 8.30 in the morning meeting that'll be done by 11, which means noon. <laughs> and I gotta gotta go home and start the motor home up and, and start heading northwest. Road. So that's so, so that's cool. it. And we'll be back at Halloween. So you're gonna yeah. be gone from mid yeah mid August to, to mid end, October yeah, end of October. So and uh, yeah. wow, that that's, is and so I'll exciting. drive about probably around fifteen thousand miles on this trip. So wow, Just, I, I did a road yeah. trip last year with my yeah. son and it was awesome yeah I, just in a car i mean a bit yeah. my minivan we didn't sleep yeah. in it or anything yeah. but it was, it was and if so you do it fun. if you do it in a motor home all of a sudden you're going to find you can drive another two or three hundred miles a day if you want i mean i've i've driven 800 mile days and i'm not tired because you don't you stop when you want to stop like at a rest stop because then the diesels and we carry 90 gallons of fuel which gets me about 800 miles oh wow so um Anyway, you just, you know, it's, it's kind of a way of life. And I'd like to be gone longer than that and more times a year, but my wife says no. Ah, she wants to be home a little bit. <laughs> yes, yeah, and that's it. And I say, well, yeah, you know, a week or two is a little bit. You know, you got to, uh, but. Uh, now, what's know. coming up at Johnson Photo Imaging? Anything in August? Oh, gosh. Because I know we're coming for Halloween. Yeah, you <laughs> you got to come for Halloween. That's going to be your uh, anniversary party. The, the best thing to find out as far as as both the store and in focus, the education program, is uh, just go to johnsonphotoimaging.com. Uh, okay. And we have a schedule on there of what's coming up. Uh, since I'm going to be out of town, I have to tell you, I really haven't paid a lot of it. If I'm going to miss it, why, why you know, think about Well, you have a good staff. About it. Yeah. You have an uh, excellent staff. And then the uh, education program is called In Focus, and Donald has that. He keeps that updated at least weekly, and there's, uh, say, three or four things a week in general. That's uh, awesome. We're a little slower because of the heat right now. It eliminates, eliminates some of your outside stuff that you can right. do. Uh, but uh, we just we keep everybody busy and and we we also try to uh, most classes except maybe like dry creek or things like that uh, where you can handle more people uh, most of the things are eight nine people as a max because it we want everybody to have a good experience and a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the instructor and if we're going to dry creek and have 20 25 people we usually have three instructors out there to help people. But that's more yeah. of a shoot anyway. Yeah, it's, it's a shoot, really but a still, class, you'd be it? surprised how many people have no idea of what oh, we're trying to teach them. They don't understand, well, what's an ISO? What's an F stop? And you know, I've been teaching since 2009. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah, it is. And when, I'm Joe, not, when Joe first yeah. started working yeah. here, he, you know, he's a brainiac. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For me, it took me three years yeah. to learn how to shoot in manual. Yeah. Actually, yeah. though, after I learned, I was kind of mad that it took me so yeah. long because it was a lot of poor teachers yeah. was part yeah. of the reason. But anyway. That's what I learned was in manual, shooting manual. Yeah, and I'm but glad anyway, I did he was because like, it's. It's the first yeah. class that we put together, yeah. and he was like, oh, you yeah. know, we got to put more in it. I'm like, no, yeah. we have to keep it simple. That's our model. Yeah. We simplify the technical. Yeah, that's right. But he's like, oh, come on, this is too slow. I'm yeah. like, it's not too slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But it is. The manual's great. To, to learn in because then you learn when you want to use aperture priority and when you want to use shutter priority uh, and if if it's not appropriate then you shoot it manual and you learn how to meter uh, you know and trust your meter and don't look at the back of your camera and say oh that picture looks perfect 
Yeah. Well, it could be overexposed two stops or underexposed two stops. Could stop. be blurry. Yeah, it could and be you blurry. So you, you've got to really do it. And that, that's where one of these hood man loops that you use to focus on the back for the Eclipse. Oh, yeah. Also carry that with you when you're, when you're going out and doing it. Um, but, but it really is, improves your photography all total. Once well, it helps you understand what's yeah. going on. Yeah, you're in control of your camera instead of the other way around, and, yeah. and that works I'm a big proponent. Real great. That's yeah. our first class. Yeah. We have a class called the Four Weeks to Proficiency yeah. in Photography. And by the way, it's an, it's an interactive online class with a teacher who checks your homework. That's me, Ooh. with a lot of support. And that, our next class, I think, starts September 7th. It's an online class, so we've had people from all over the world take it. It's kind of exciting. Great. Um, but that's the first class. Yeah. Shoot a manual because once you understand that, everything else yeah. gets easier. It gets so much easier. You're exactly right. So, so Now remember, mm. all, all, a lot of what we talked about today are going to be in the show notes on understandphotography.com. And by the way, if you are watching this live, our Photoshop Elements Cram course is still on pre-orders. It goes live on August 1st, which is only a couple days from now. So we still have the pre-order price. Um, it's still available at the pre-order price, which I'm not going to say because this is going to be a recording and then people are going to go, well, I want that price. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so check that out on understandphotography.com. Now next week on the Understand Photography show, Joe Fitzpatrick is going to be back and we are going to talk about the different types of triggers for flash photography. Uh, so tune in here if you want to watch us live on the Understand Photography Facebook page. Or, again, you can listen to us on iTunes or watch us on YouTube later. I'm Peggy Fair, and thank you so much for watching Episode 47 of the Understand Photography Show. We'll see you next week. Get up!